Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, I will go over the expected 2020 CPA4 exam changes. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where I house all my 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, tax, and finance lectures. And this is a list of all the courses that I cover, including CPA topics. Please connect with me on Instagram as well as Facebook. Also on my website, I do have additional resources in addition to my lectures. I have resources resources such as notes, PowerPoint slides, multiple choice, multiple choice questions, true false exercises, 2000 plus CPA questions. So the first thing I'm going to go over is the topics. I'm going to go over each topic briefly, uh, starting with the financial instrument credit losses, ASU 2613. Uh, simplifying the test for goodwill impairment. So some of them are easier, make making our life easier or your life easier, my life easier as well. Others may not be. Um, changes to the disclosure requirement of fair value. The how to account for the implementation cost when it comes to cloud computing and the uh, target improvement to related party guidance for VIEs, variable interest entities. Now, any topic that I have a recording for, I'm going to tell you I have a recording for this. I'll put the link in the description. Starting with the financial instrument credit losses, this this uh, accounting standard is in, in response to the financial crisis because banks suddenly incurred a huge amount of losses. And before they used to, they used to they used to uh, record the losses as they incur. Now we're going to be moving to a new system called current expected credit losses or CECL, current expected credit losses. So simply put, the we have to be proactive in the loss recognition. So simply put, um, especially banks and financial institution, they have to look in advance, not about incurred losses now, about expected. And you will see it's, it's, it's very interesting. So this represents a significant change in the allowance for credit losses um, when it comes to accounting module requiring immediate recognition of management estimate of current expected. So notice it's expected credit losses. And how do you project your expected credit losses? It's not as easy. I do have a link in the description covering this topic, the current expected credit losses. You can look at the link. It's very interesting because in, in, in implementation, it's, it's very difficult for companies to implement. So under the prior model, losses were recognized only as they were occurred. Okay, which has be stated that there is a delay in the recognition of expected losses because after the financial crisis, banks were booking billions with a B of losses. Okay, so that's why they, they, they implemented this. The new model is applicable to all financial instruments that are not accounted for at fair value through net income. So why they don't care about the fair value net income? Because the fair value net income financial instruments are already accounted in net income. So there's nothing there's nothing to worry about. We want to worry about the fair value that are not accounted for in net income, okay? Thereby bringing consistency in accounting treatment across different type of financial instrument. And they require consideration of broader range of variable when, fo when forming loss estimate. So now you have to look at many factors, industry factor, macroeconomic, microeconomic, company factors, customer factors, so on and so forth. Okay, so simply put, these changes will mostly affect financial service companies and any companies that have a lot of financial instrument, they're going to be at the most exposure from this. So this is kind of this is this is a little bit, I would say, more difficult, but we'll get we'll we'll get the handle of it. See my see my recording, and I'll have more recording about this topic. The second topic, actually, it's good news: simplifying the test for goodwill, the test for goodwill impairment. We have the old model, now we have a new model, which is this is good. Like we like stuff like this simpler. So let's see what 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 it used to be. The old models, you'd you'd have two step process to test goodwill for impairment. The first step, we'd look at the fair value, see if it's less than the carrying value, then perform the second step if there is any impairment. And here we include in goodwill in the first step. In the second step, we determine the fair value uh, of the goodwill, which is we have to find the implied fair value of the goodwill, then compare that to the carrying amount. This was the old. Now, if you're interested in looking at the old module, I'm going to put the description also in the link if you if you want to look at this. Well, look at the new new module. The new method step one only. So the new method simply put, we look at the difference between the carrying value and the fair value of the reporting unit. Remember the good will happen at the reporting unit and simply put, we're done. There's no, there's no two. We don't have to find the implied value of goodwill. The difference, the access now, the EE access, the access of the carrying value. Okay. So simply put, 
just look at my old module and don't go through step two and that will be your loss the amount of loss of goodwill so this is easy this is good stuff this is easy um, the the third one is the changes into the disclosure requirement of the fair value measurement now if you don't know what level one level two level three fair value I have a description below you can click at and look at the description just to see what they are so now what we're gonna do we're gonna be they remove the amount again this is some simplification here remove the amount of and reasons for transfer between level one and level two and also the policy for timing of transfer between levels so they make it a little bit simplified now the disclosure is only required for level 3 valuation and level 3 is mo the most involved anyhow again if you don't know what level 1 2 and 3 look in the description now the disclosure valuation method for level 3 the method is no longer required all what you have to do now is to disclose the significant unabsorbable input so basically tell us what's the risk and uncertainty in, in determining level three fair market value. So they're trying to simplify it. Also, uh, for for non-public, which is private company, they, uh, when they no longer require the changes and unrealized gain and losses for the period included in earning for reoccurring level three fair value measurement held at the end of the reporting period. So again, a little bit of simplification or less burden for private companies, okay? The fourth topic is customers accounting for the implementation cost incurred in cloud computing arrangement. That's a contract. So the previous gap, the current gap, did not have did not specifically address the accounting for implementation cost, not for cloud computing. Cloud computing, pretty much we have it either a software or a service, but the implementation cost of those hosting arrangement. That's which it's a service contract. So what's what's a cloud computing? It's basically an arrangement between you. And, 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 and a cloud service where you can either have a software or a service. For example, if you use Google, you store your document, that's basically a service. Uh, but companies, they sometimes they use a software on the cloud. So if they have a software versus a service, well, if it's a software versus a service, for a software, they capitalize the cost of the software because it's simply a software. Now the implementation cost, now they have specific procedure any implementation cost is added to the software cost. So the implementation cost, if, it, if you're hosting the software, it's basically a software cost and that cost is amortized. If it's a service arrangement, a service arrangement, basically if you're storing your files, it's you, you'll treat it as an expense, that's the cost of the service. However, the implementation cost is treated as a prepaid. And what do you do with the prepaid? You're gonna amortize the prepaid over the term of the hosting arrangement. Now, what is the term of the hosting arrangement? Fastly, they have a lot of details. I didn't include them because I don't believe it's necessary for me to include them. The last but not least is guidance for variable interest entities. Here we're simplifying the rules again for non-public, non-public, which is private companies. Now, um, now you have to understand, so what we're going to be talking about here only applies if both the parent and the subsidiaries are private companies, uh, are private companies, which is non-public. So what happened is now private companies can elect not to apply the variable interest entity guidance under common control so what is the variable interest entity guidance it's it's the process to determine whether an entity we are the primary beneficiary of the entity and if we are then we need to consolidate that entity now bear in mind the vie came after enron so if, if both companies are private it's not really necessary to implement those VIE rules. Now, if you don't know what the VIE rules are, well, I'm gonna also put the VIE link in my description. So this way you would say, okay, now those rules don't apply to non-public companies. Also, this is easy, so this is simplification. Um, from the topics themselves, the only thing I see challenging that's coming up challenging, I would say the the CECL, which is, I, I, I do have a couple of recording about CECL. I'll, I'm going to put more, but that's the only thing that I believe it's challenging in a sense that it's a difficult, not difficult, but it's a topic that you will, you would require significant amount or a decent amount of time to, uh, to follow. Now, if you have any questions, you could email me, please visit my website. I do have, I do provide the uh, help for students, accounting students, students who are going for their CPA exam. I have a lot of resources on my website. Check it out and good luck.